Make.com just finally released their new code module. This means you can now run actual code like JavaScript or Python within your automations without leaving the platform. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step everything that you need to know about the module. I'll also show you five use cases where we can actually apply this in our automations. And in case it's your first time here, my name is Michele and over the past 12 months, I've helped over 40 businesses implement AI and automations and taught over 17,000 people in the process all starting with zero technical knowledge. With that being said, let's dive in. All right, so this right here is the documentation that Make.com put for this feature. Um, it is currently in open beta, so it's in beta access, and it's only available for paid plans. So if you're in a free plan in Make.com, you will not be able to see this. Make.com allows you to use JavaScript or Python code to run your scenarios. Uh, you can now write code within the module to help on an IDE that offers some familiar features, such as common syntax, auto-completion, error highlighting, or you can add code dynamically from previous modules in your scenario and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, the key benefits here or the features um, with each plan. So core get access to the JavaScript and Python. Then they all get access to actually the ability to import custom libraries. Only enterprise plan has access to that, which means you can import code. Then for core pro and teams, you can use sandbox environment with one CPU, 512 VM RAM. So the, um, the amount of storage you have. Whilst for enterprise, we have a bigger RAM, so more storage. In terms of credit usage and pricing, how they charge you is that the module itself, when it runs, every second that it runs is two credits, okay? And you can see here uh, the execution time in MS, milliseconds, and that's it. And then there's some use cases that you can use uh, just an example as well. All right, so right now I'm in make.com. All we have to do to access the app is to go to create a new scenario, which will create a new automation. We can then type make code. There we go, make code. It's only for paid plans, as I told you before. It's verified, it's two credits for every second, and we can design and code uh, and run a code snippet. If I go here, we have a few things that we have to look at. The first thing is the language. So this is saying, hey, do you wanna use JSON, JavaScript, or do you wanna use Python? These are different types of languages that people use when they write code. Now for our use case, we're gonna stick to JavaScript because it is the easiest to get started with, and it's the one that's behind most of this infrastructure right here. Python, I guess, is more advanced, uh, more for math or APIs. Uh, but for this case, JavaScript, very easy, very good. And we can use that. Now the input format, which means what is the thing that we're giving the actual module for it to run? We have two different types. We have the code editor and we have math code. So code editor is when we actually write the code here within the actual node or module in this case. The map code is when we have the code from previous steps and we're sending it towards here for it to actually run. Okay, and so the way they would look is that we have the code editor and the code will be written here. But if I switch to map code, now I can pull in a variable from the previous steps in here and this will be the code itself. Now, this is great if you are using code, uh, if you're basically making the code in the previous steps and you wanna push it towards here for it to run the code to then give you the output. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to stick with the code editor because this is the one where we actually get to write the code in here. Uh, you also have this button right here where you can zoom in. You can actually see the whole code. Then we have the option also to zoom out and we can see like this. And then we have input and we have advanced settings. So input is when you're, when you're writing code, you're basically giving it an action. You're saying, hey, take this sort of data and turn it into this. So the input here that I'm giving you is this variable right here that is called FOO, right? And so if in the case we're giving it a date and we want the code to take that date and turn it into something more readable, then the input will be a date. And this is where we put date here, which is the key, right? Because it's key value pairs. Key is like, what is the actual name of the variable? And the value is like, what is the actual variable that we're feeding in towards the code node, okay? And so the only thing that changed here is that typically when we make uh, automations on make.com, the way that it would work usually is that we pull in variables and we um, put it here. Now, in this case for code, as you can see, we have no option to pull in any variables inside here. And so this is why we have to add variables down here to basically reference them as we're running the code, as we're doing the action. Okay, so again, this is the code, this is the variables, and you can add more variables in case you are referencing more variables in your code right here, in case you need more variables to do the thing that you actually wanted to do. Then we have additional dependencies. Now, additional dependencies are only available for enterprise plans. What they are is if you wanna add more features, more toolkits to the actual toolbox that we have here. Um, but in this case, we're not gonna use them because we're not in the enterprise plan and neither are you probably. Um, so this is pretty much it for the code. It's actually quite easy. We just have the code, we just have the variables. That's pretty much it. And we can run this. So let's say I run this here on the bottom, uh, bottom left. We can see now that we have this right here. 
So two credits are being used because it took one second. This is the input and this is the output. So the output is logs, standard output, which is empty, standard error, which is uh, nothing here because there was no error. The execution time, which is milliseconds, 208. And now this is the result, which will be empty because we didn't actually give it anything. We're just running test data. And one important thing here is like before the make code app, what did we use? Well, in this case, if I go to set variable, which I'll show you even later on as well, and I press here, I can see that up here, I have different formulas. So if I go here, floor, if I go here to, to median, these are different formulas in the backend that take some sort of data and transform them into something else. So this right here are math functions. This right here are text functions. This right here are calendar functions, which means that you can manipulate time. And these right here are um, functions of working arrays. And this here are just custom and system variables, right? And so this is previously how we've had to transform something into something else, which is not great because we're kind of limited by the amount of formulas that we have here. And yes, sometimes or most times, all we need is just a simple start case. All we need is a simple capitalize to capitalize a letter. But sometimes we want to use maybe three or four at once at the same time. And that means making a formula that nobody even understands and to test and to look back and it's just a mess, right? And so that's where the code node or the code in this case module, right? Not n uh, The code module comes into place, which makes it so much easier for us to be able to run something a bit more complex um, in seconds and it's much easier. Okay, so these right here are going to be the use cases that we're going to go towards. So five different examples to show you exactly how you can apply the code module for your automations. The first one is formatting text. So code is amazing in taking something, so an input, which is unstructured and giving you a very structured output, right? So in this case, we have the example of a phone number. So you scrape a phone number and it comes with spaces, dashes or country codes. You use the code module to clean it up into a standard format. So as you can see right here, we have spaces, we have dashes, we have more dashes, we have country codes and so on. And this is what we call an unstructured input, right? So we wanna standardize it and make sure that we have an output which is standard. And so the way to do that is to be able for us to take the input, put it in the code, and then be able for this to run it to give us an output back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press copy. I'm gonna go to make.com, I'm gonna delete this. So start from scratch, make code right here. And then we leave this as JavaScript code editor, and I'm going to replace this whole thing, paste it here. As you can see, this is good. Actually, we can, we shouldn't have copied the whole thing. Just copy this part, not the code for make and paste it here. There we go. And now this code, what it should do is it should first take a for number, which is a constant variable, which is the thing that we actually give it. And then what it does is that it removes spaces, dashes and parentheses. It ensures it only has digits and maybe keep the plus for country code and it returns the cleaned number. This is the thing that we want to, to get out. Clean the phone number, cleaned. All right, so in this case, the variable that we wanna give it is phone. So I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste it here. So this is the name of the variable and the value will be the actual phone number that we want to use to then um, clean up. So in this case, we can copy this and put it here. And so what I can do is press save and I can run it once. So this will now run the make code and we can see that the output that we got was a clean phone number, which is all together. So this is a standard format for a phone number. And if you have more phone numbers, let's say you have a Google sheet of phone numbers, then you can use those to be able to then um, run that as an automation to clean them all up. All right, so that right there is for the first um, example. So we're taking a phone number, we're giving it to a code, and then the code responds to us with a cleaned up version of a phone number. So the use case that you can use for this is let's say you have a database full of different phone numbers that are all unstructured. What you can do is run the sheet or the database, run the phone number here every single time. So run it through each phone number to format it and then update the database to have it a structured format. So that right there is how you can format text using the code node. The second one is generating random IDs and codes. So the example is you wanna create a random order ID for a Google Sheet entry. And with one line of JavaScript, you can make a unique ID inside your automation. So a lot of the times companies have to create a unique string it can be 001112ABCYD. Now we can create a code. So we can create a random ID for every single person that comes through using a, this code right here. And this can be used for orders for an order company or for any shipping location company uh, that needs new order IDs for every single order that they do. And this code right here is amazing. So uh, what we can do is go here. I wanna delete this, put this again, make code, run code. And then I'm going to paste this I'm gonna delete the variables because we're not using this anymore. 
And what this now does, if I zoom in, there we go, is it formats the order ID. So it all starts with ORD for every single one. And then it's followed by eight random characters. So it can start with ORD and then the math, it does some math stuff, string, substring, two uppercase, bunch of stuff that you don't really need to know about to be able to then return. So give us the output, which is the order ID, which is your random ID here. And so let's zoom out and I press save. Now I can run this once and this should now give me a code that is random. So you can see now we have JLN2MMWJ. And so again, this can be applied when you have a company that needs to generate new unique IDs every single time that they have to make an order or do something else, right? And that's where you can apply generating random IDs in codes. The next one is math beyond what make offers. So uh, make.com has some math features, right? But the problem is that they're not super, super advanced, right? And maybe you want to calculate the compound interest tax formulas or percentages that make doesn't have as defaults. So instead of hacking formulas, you can just add them in code. So the way that this is going to work is that we're going to feed it the principal, which is the thousand, the rate, which is 5% right here, and then the years, which is 10. And so what we're going to do is take the principal, take the rate, take the years as the inputs, and then we're going to run some compound interest formula, A equals P times um, square bracket of one plus R to the power of T. Then we're going to round this to two decimal places, and then we're going to return the result, which is the total and the gain as well. Okay, this is just for math formulas that we wouldn't usually do with make formulas. We can just do it with code. Um, so we can copy this. I'm gonna go here, paste this. Everything good. And now what I have to feed it is principal, rate, and years. If I go here. I can add a variable. In this case, the first one will be principal. The second one will be rate. And the third one will be years. So this will be a thousand, which is the thing that we start with. Uh, the rate of increase, so over time, it increases by 0 0.05 um, to the power of the years. So press save. Now, if I run this once, this will now calculate the formula based on the inputs that we give it. And the result will now be the total and the amount gained, which is this, which is a lot of money. There you go. Um, and there you go. So that right there is how you use math within the actual um, code here to be able to create formulas. Again, we're just running code and then we're giving it different variables to take that as an input to then give us the output, which is the result, right? In this case, apart from math, we have date and time formatting. So let's say the input um, is this right here. We wanna format it into this before sending it to Slack or email. This is perfect when you want a nice human readable dates because a lot of the times we get 2025, 10, 02, T, 12, 30, 00, which isn't understandable to a normal human at first, right? They have to look at this and they have to think about one month of this and then what time is this and then what is in this. Um, so what we do here is we feed this as the input and the input name is called date string. And then using this code, we format it so it's nice. So I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna go here. I'm going to just delete this again, make code, run code, uh, replace this. What this is doing now is it's taking the date string, which is the variable that we have to replace this with. And then I have to take this, uh, this right here. There we go. Value. And this right here will be the thing that will be fed into the code to give us the uh, a better output. I'm gonna press save, run once. And now the result will be 0 to 10, 20, at 7.30 PM much more clean way of us looking at the date instead of looking at it in, in that format. Now, this right here, if we get on a technical level, a set a variable, which is just a way to, for us to test something in make.com. If I press this, the variables that we would replace this with are these ones, right? So we have X, these are all the variables that we can manipulate uh, math functions, right? Instead of using code, but these are limited. This doesn't give us everything that we need. These are just the ones that the make.com developers told us, hey, you might want to use this. These are the main ones. There isn't much more that you would probably use this, but sometimes we can go outside of the scope of what they give us here. Or sometimes what happens is that we want to use this, but we also want to use this, this, and this, right? And so instead of making some fancy formula right here with these four and having to test it all the time, we can just make a snippet of code, which is much easier and then launch that we want to take something and then turn it into something else. Same thing with words, go here, words, uh, right here, which manipulates text. So it takes some sort of text that comes through, 
it then um, changes it into something else. And these are all different types of transformations. Same thing with uh, calendars and uh, working arrays as well, right? And those are the ones that we typically use this as well if we didn't have the code node, which is the ones that we used before, right? Instead of using this. All right, so this right here is the date formatting. Now we get onto the API response cleanup. So sometimes you get a messy API response. What this means in the simplest way possible is that when you send a signal to a server, some sort of software, we get something back. Usually what we get back is data that looks like this. We get maybe the user ID or the name if we're calling maybe a CRM, right? We get the profile email, phone number, there will be the request ID, the timestamp of the request, right? When we actually send the information to get it back. And so sometimes we get something that looks like this, but we don't actually need all of this. Maybe sometimes we just need the ID we just need the name, or maybe we just need the email only. Typically, if you wanted to extract these sort of pieces of information, free code app or module on make.com, you would have had to use some fancy formula or maybe even two or three steps of automation to then extract the things that you need. In this case, we can just use this code right here, which is taking the API response, which is the input, which again is this. We're giving it this and we're saying, hey, can you take the response? Can you then extract the user ID? Can you extract the username and the email? which will give us the ID, the name of the email. So this will be the response. This will be the output that we get. So if I just copy this, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna delete this, make code, run code, I'll replace this. And now the three things that we have to give it, or the actually, the one thing we have to give it is gonna be the API response because this right here is the input. So anything that you see next to the input will be the different variables that we have to give it. In this case, well, we can replace this with uh, API response. And the API response will be this one right here. There we go. And you press save. When I run this, now we're giving it the API response. We're giving it a code and saying, hey, extract the different variables from that code. And the result in this case will be the ID, my name, and my email. Now, this is great if you have tons of different variables within an API response, and usually, <laughs> An API response can look four or five times even more um, sort of more, more congested than that. So if you have a simple code like this that just extracts the variable that you wanted to extract, then it will make your life so much easier. And if you want the full document right here with the notes, the input and the codes that we added today, make sure to check out the first link down below, which will take you to my free school community. You can go to the classroom section, you can go to the templates vault and below here, you will see the latest video, which will be the make code app. And you'll be able to see a button right here, which will be download the notion document. And if you apply and you get in, you also get access to the AI automations one-on-one -on -one course, which is a very, very comprehensive course, which takes a real beginner in AI automation to someone who's actually able to build automations for themselves and for other businesses. All right, so that right there is the full release of the Make Code app uh, that Make.com released, which allows us to be much more flexible when we're building automations. And if you like this video and you wanna see how Make.com actually compares to any 10, then check out this video on the screen where I actually build a full onboarding system, both on Make.com and any 10, show you the ins and outs and which one I personally recommend. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.